Good morning. Good morning. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. It is good to be together again today to worship God and to share our lives in friendship and fellowship. As we gather together, we do so by centering our hearts on worship with the responsive call to worship. We gather to worship our God, who speaks the words of peace we need in chaotic times. We gather to follow Jesus, who encourages us to never fear, for he is near. We gather to be filled with the Spirit, who anoints us so we can go to serve our world. you to prayer. God of amazing grace and miraculous power, you are always present with us. You send us the spirit of courage, but we remain afraid. You send us the spirit of truth, but we cling to our illusions. You send us the spirit of healing, but we cannot let go of our hurts. Holy Spirit of forgiveness, come to us again, shake our hearts, set our souls on fire with your love, send us out into the world rejoicing in your power. Hear us as we silently hold out to you our particular burdens of guilt and sin. We are grateful that you hear our prayers, O oh God. We give you thanks that as you hear our prayers, so too you forgive our sins. May our hearts be open to receiving your spirit, so that we may help faithfully. In Jesus' name, amen.
our scripture passage this morning is another one that is among the favorites because it speaks to us in so many ways. Let us hear the word of God as it comes to us from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 14, verses 22 through 32. Immediately, Jesus made the disciples get into the boat and go on ahead to the other side while he dismissed the crowds. And after he had dismissed the crowds, he went up to the mountain by himself to pray. When evening came, he was there alone. But by this time, the boat, battered by the waves, was far from the land. For the wind was against them. And early in the morning, he came walking toward them on the sea. But when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were terrified, saying, it's a ghost. And they cried out in fear. But immediately, Jesus spoke to them and said, Take heart, it is I. Do not be afraid. Peter answered him, Lord, if it is you, command me to come to you on the water. And Jesus said, Come. So Peter got out of the boat, started walking on the water, and came toward Jesus. But when he noticed the strong wind, he became frightened. And beginning to sink, he cried out, Lord, save me. Jesus immediately reached out his hand and caught him, saying to him, You of little faith, why did you doubt? When they got into the boat, the wind ceased. Thanks be to God for the reading and the hearing of this holy word. Let us pray. Lord God, it is our privilege to be here to worship you, to hear your word, to reflect on the message that you have for each one of us. We ask that your spirit be with us, that we may quiet our minds of all that distracts us, that we may hear the word that you have, and upon hearing be strengthened in our faith, in our love, and in our service. Amen. Jesus was always good at orchestrating tasks and places to be going. The disciples were used to following his directions, and I doubt that they thought much about it when he set them in the boat and said, you go on ahead, I'll catch up later. And then he sent them off across in the Sea of Galilee. It was probably a relief to some of those disciples to have some time without Jesus, to talk among themselves about what they had just witnessed. Jesus had taken five loaves of bread and two fish, and with his blessing, gave this meager offering to his disciples to pass through the multitude of people in the crowd. And when everyone had received and had their fill, there were baskets left over, baskets of leftover food from just two fish and five loaves of bread. And somehow, Jesus had known all along that this small offering would be a lesson to think in terms not of scarcity, but of abundance. And so most likely the disciples welcomed the opportunity to talk among themselves as Jesus pushed their boat out into the Sea of Galilee. But it wasn't long before a storm started brewing, and they knew that they were in for a long and scary night. We can picture fear on the faces of the disciples who were using all of their strength to maneuver against the power of the wind 
and in spite of their efforts, waves breaking against the boat, sending it lurching from one wave to another. Matthew doesn't tell us that they were afraid, but how could they not be? And then, when it was near morning, they saw a shape walking toward them on the choppy sea. And they were terrified. And they cried out in fear. Fear plays a significant role in the story. And how well we know the power that fear holds over us whenever we find ourselves in troubled waters, challenging us to change requiring that we find our way through the unknown. Fear is a natural instinct. When we don't know where we're going, if we'll even make it through, fear immobilizes us. Fear keeps us from thinking any rational thoughts. Fear brings out the worst of us. And this is such a vivid image on the Sea of Galilee to picture the disciples already exhausted from a night of desperate attempts to gain control against the storm that tossed them about, threatening to overturn their boat and to send them into the water, drowning. And still, there was no mercy as the winds and the waves continued to beat against their boat. Exhausted and afraid, they looked out to see a figure walking on top of the water. Certainly an unexpected sight, an unfamiliar en encounter, and all they could think of I would imagine was one more thing to battle, but how do you deal with a ghost? And they were terrified. And they cried out in fear, to which the figure responded, do not be afraid, it is I. Jesus' voice, distorted by the winds, and words that bring comfort, the comfort of God. God who named himself, I am, I am who I am. And Jesus said, it is I. But in the state of tiredness and of fear, the disciples were not comforted. It's only Peter who thinks that maybe this is Jesus coming toward them. Maybe. And so Jesus calls out, Peter calls out to Jesus, if this is really you, tell me to come to you on the water. To which Jesus responded, come. And Peter stepped out in faith. And while he trusted Jesus, who had never disappointed him, in this moment, the waves were strong against his legs, and the wind powerful against his body, and it scared him. And so Peter began to sink. And he cried out to Jesus, save me. And Jesus reached out a hand, lifted him up, and said, oh, you of little faith, why did you doubt? We can answer that question. Peter doubted because he was afraid. And as soon as Jesus had gotten them into the boat, he calmed the storm. There is, without question, a relationship between doubt and fear. They are linked together. Fear expects danger and pain. Doubt is to be afraid. Oh, you of little faith, 
Why are you afraid? Why? Jesus asked. And any rational mind would ask, why wouldn't Peter be afraid? Peter was defying the laws of nature. Standing on top of the water, people cannot do that. He was standing against forces more powerful than he was, in danger of finding himself over his head, drowning. He was standing in an impossible place. Peter had good reason to be afraid. He had good reason to doubt that he could continue to do the impossible. And who of us would not be afraid? For that matter, who of us would have stepped from the relative safety of the boat out into the storm? We often forget that while Peter is encountering Jesus, there are 11 more disciples in the boat. Apparently 11 of the 12, couching in fear. Jesus' attention, though, was focused on the one who at, at, at least attempted to be engaged with him. At least Peter had a little faith. So let's think a little bit about fear, doubt, and faith. Fear. We've all experienced it. Fear is a natural instinct when there is danger, when we have to make a split-second decision as to whether we need to flee or fight or freeze as an immediate response. Fear is a protective measure. But when fear continues, we close ourselves off from rational thought. We can't even think. We cannot problem solve, and we can't begin to imagine possibilities. We aren't able to dream. We can't trust that anything good is going to happen. Dwelling on fear makes us wonder if God is present, makes us call into question God's intention, makes us doubt that God even cares. Jesus often told his disciples, do not be afraid just as he did when he walked up to the boat. He also said that perfect love casts out all fear. And we know God as perfect love. When we are consumed by fear, we close ourselves to an awareness of God's presence, to the possibilities that God puts before us, and we shut off all chance of experiencing the fullness of God's unconditional love. Fear leads to doubt, and doubt gets in the way of faith. Faith is having complete confidence in the presence, power, and nature of God. When Peter stepped out of that boat, it was with the intention of coming to Jesus. Peter had no intention of calming the storm, or even that Jesus would quiet the winds. Peter's only, only thought was to be near Jesus when he took that first step. But then he took his eyes off Jesus and became most aware of all of the reasons that he should not be doing what he was doing. And he began to sink. Jesus saved Peter, and when they were safely in the boat, Jesus asked Peter, why? Why did you doubt? 
Storms don't always come in the form of wind and of rain. They come to us when we feel a sense of malaise, when we don't have a sense of purpose. They come to us in the form of tragedy, serious extended illness. A storm can brew when issues of social justice come to the forefront. There are many times when Jesus stands outside of the safety of our boat, when we have a choice to step outside the walls of thought and convictions that surround us, keeping us comfortable and safe, keeping us out of those waters of change, stepping into the place where winds push us into new understandings of God's purpose, of God's justice, the demands of compassion and love, grace and forgiveness. Because that's where Jesus is. Jesus stands in the midst of God's perfect love and invites us to join him in that place where by faith we can step into the storm, we can walk on water and we can take Jesus' hand and we can see for ourselves the miracles that come with perfect love. Fear or faith, it's our choice. Let us choose faith. Thanks be to God, I invite you to prayer. God, you are the one who is ever present with us in all times, in all seasons of life. You are the one who is present when we are in comfort. You are the one who calls us to step outside of our comfort zone, to take your hand, to risk following you in ways that seem impossible. You steady us, O oh God. We ask that we may have faith over fear, that we may have faith that supersedes our reluctance, that we may have faith that allows us to step and do your will always. In Jesus' name, amen. <laughs>
we gather today, we celebrate the men in our lives, particularly the fathers. It is a joy to recognize the distinct role that men have in raising children, in showing strength and vulnerability, in caring for one another. It's a joy to know that men are allowed to be human these days. They no longer need to put on a front of pure strength and courage. And it is a joy to celebrate every man that has influenced our lives, and particularly our fathers. And so with that in mind, let us pray. Dear God, Jesus called you Abba, Father, Daddy. On this day in particular, we pray for all who are fathers. We pray for fathers near and far. We pray for fathers alive and fathers who are dead. We pray for fathers who are present with their children and those who are absent. We pray for new fathers and old fathers. We pray for those who have loved well and those who did not love as well. We pray for biological dads and dads who raised us. We pray for those who don't get to be dads at all. We pray for dads whose love was unconditional and those who did not know how to love. We pray with gratitude for the strengths and with grace for the shortcomings of our fathers. Hear our silent prayers. Dear God, as we have celebrated Juneteenth yesterday, we pray for freedom, justice, and equality for all. We recognize the trauma that brothers and sisters with dark skin have experienced, first as slaves, then as free people without equal rights. Through many long years of striving for equality and justice, we confess, O oh God, that people of color continue to live with the effects of deprivation economically and socially. We pray that all may see in you such great abundance that no one will feel the need or the desire to hold down any group of people so that another group may thrive. Give to us a sense of holy impatience, courage to step out into the storm of racial tensions and to do and speak that which is right in your sight. Hear our silent prayers. Dear God, you are our creator and our sustainer. You are a God of distant power and you are a God who abides within our hearts. We pray for all your people everywhere. May we live with adequate resources. May the greedy find freedom in sharing from your abundance so that those who are doing without may have enough. May all who struggle with illness of body, mind, and spirit know your healing power and experience the peace and wholeness which is your gift. Hear our silent prayers. Almighty God, you hear each of our prayers, those which are spoken, those which are thought, 
those which we hold in our hearts without names and words to them. And we give you thanks, for you not only hear us, but you answer in your wisdom. You are ever present with us, and we are so grateful for all of your gifts. And now, O oh God, we continue to pray with one voice as Jesus taught us, saying, Our Lord Father, who art Lord in heaven, heaven hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. so that all needs may be met. We go from here in generosity, giving of ourselves. And we go from here in faith, knowing that the love of God our parent, our Father, and the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit, is with each and every one of us now and in all days to come. Alleluia. Amen. Amen. 